So th at the ashram there's lots of change. In the world there's lots of change. And always there is that challenge to change. So the challenge to change is, is always with us whether there's terrorists or not. And the fact that life itself is just very fleeting and to make the best use of the time that you have. That requires an ability to see that you have those opportunities to change. You know that we have to start with ourselves. We have to bring it in to ourselves that we can make peace amongst ourselves, amongst the people who live here, amongst the people that come, you in your own centers of light can make peace and keep it generating that vibration happening. It's just very essential at this time. But in your own life, what is the change that you have to bring in? That you're waiting for tomorrow or when you have time or when you have the space or like what? What are we waiting for? And it just seems essential here that we that we keep practicing it. We keep practicing that ability to change. It requires a commitment and when you have a group it's like you have the encouragement to change because there's always somebody reminding you and you also have the support to do it. And we have the teachings and the tools that will bring about change. And if you look at what's happened in your life since you met, entered into the light, there's change. What is your goal? How do you cooperate with your spiritual evolution? How do you move beyond your limitations to illumination, spiritual illumination, so that your mind set is on the light. And if that conviction is there, then you can move forward. But doubt is a back door. So we're all at this crossroads and it's just made evident by what's happening. We're there always at a crossroad, every single moment. But the, but the events in the world are making it more evident. Like people are dying. We could die. I mean, it just brings it home. And so what direction do you want to go in? Where do you want to put the effort, the energy that you have? Because the energy is neutral. You have already created the world that you're living in. You can change that. So your desires, your needs, your concepts have made a world and you can change those. So what would you change in your life? And how would you do it? And how important is it to do it? It's like deciding that what you know brings about change is worth putting the effort in. So your personal development, your ability to know yourself, your ability to be free of the limitations that are put on by this, by that, by this person, by that person, by this family, by this culture. There's something else that we're all meant to do. And it keeps happening over and over. Disasters happen to bring it back because we become so complacent in our, in our way of life. So what do we develop in our life? Do we create 
a business? Do we create a piece of art? Do we create music? Do we create whatever form the energy takes? You have to take responsibility for it, whether it's a child or a family or a house or a building or a center. You have to take responsibility for what you're bringing into the world. Your thoughts, thoughts have power. And that's why if we can keep the mantra going, if we can keep the light going, then that thought will gain power. And hopefully infuse things with that. So we've all been given and come in contact with the light. What would, what would it look like in your home, in your work, in your family, in your community, in your country, in the world, with everyone? was connected in some way. So it's to see that we actually have options. And sometimes we don't. Sometimes we are intentionally blind to the opportunities that are there in, in these moments. And so it's to open it up and see, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to change? What is it that I need to cooperate with? What is my commitment? At the ashram, we've had all of the work to do, and we had to keep thinking of different ways to bring the priorities forward. And we knew what they were. If people were here, they were the priority. So we had to make sure that there was food and lodging. And, and then there were things that also needed to be done, like the garden had to be looked after. But if that's all we did, if we looked after the people, and we looked after the garden, and we did our practices and did satsang, that's what we could do. And then weekend after weekend, people have been coming to help. And it just feels like it really does take care of itself, the ashram. It's like an amazing, alive place. And we can't determine what it's going to be, but we can only see different ways that we can change as it changes. And that's what we want to keep doing is changing so that the teachings are living and the people here are living in the teachings and the people who come have that opportunity to come in and experience the light. So each person that comes adds to that. This big bowl of light. So one of the um, the ways that there was a lot of emotion around um, the the words of war that came through the media, and a lot of people came um, who were coming at that time were sort of exhausted from the words that were coming out over the media and the emotions that that they were firing up. And it's those emotions that we have to somehow focus in a different way and bring to a different place because it's very easy to get caught up in them and not be able to see, not be able to see what your path is, not be able to see what the work is to be done, not 
being able to see because it gets clouded with the emotions. And everyone gets uh, fearful, fearful of that presence of death and have to have somewhere else to refocus on the light, to keep bringing the focus back so that you have an inner core of strength and conviction about the light. There's only few people in the world who really have that sense of having built a foundation, the saints and the people who know that there's more to death, that it's part of living and they're an inspiration. So we can also go back and read about how they live their lives and gain inspiration. And to do your own practice and to build a strong core of light so that you always have somewhere to go. A place that you can keep filled. So when we come to the crossroads, we come to a place where we can resist our path or cooperate. So then the challenge is to decide, to change, to make your commitment strong. And if there's ways that we can support each other, that's one way to come together, to come together in the light. When you're doing work, do it in the light. When you're with your family, your friends, take it to the light. And then we can just pray for peace. So that potential is there. It has to be. It's the opposite of war. So if we can get enough peace, the wars would disappear. Shivaya.